When these engines were working for a living, you would hardly ever see a clean and shiny one. These were working tools, mucky things, that would occasionally get a rub down with an oily rag, if they were lucky. The average day for a traction engine would normally start in the early hours of the morning. Just imagine waking up on a winter's morning to get steam up, ready for a day of hard graft in the fields or out on the road. From the lighting of the fire to having a good head of steam would normally take a couple of hours. So your average steam man would normally get the fire going and then retire for breakfast and a pot of tea. Then. When the engine was blowing off nicely, he would give the wife a kiss, put on his cap, all steam men wore a cap, jump up on the footplate and drive off in a puff of smoke and steam. And they probably wouldn't return till late in the evening. There are all types and makes of traction engines, Fowler, Burrell, McLaren, Wallace and Stevens, to name but a few. There was hot competition between these manufacturers to get orders for their tackle. And for many years, these factories were working flat out to get the engines to the customers. When you think that before the traction engines came along, most tasks were done by horses, it's no wonder that the order books at traction engine factories were full. These farmers and contractors wanted an easier life and the traction engine was to them the answer. On delivery day there are stories of farmers putting on their best suit and going to collect their new engine then walking out through the towns and villages in front of the engine, chest stuck out as if to say, look what I've got. I suppose it would be a very proud day taking possession of one of these beauties. They were also used as a tool of leisure in the fairgrounds. Many people saw their first ever electric light at the fairground, and the bioscope shows were the forerunner to the cinemas of today. Showman's engines would pull the rides from town to town, then assist to set the rides up, and then power them with electricity with the huge dynamo that is usually situated on the front of the engine. As the years went by, traction engines were being developed to do all sorts of tasks. Look at this, and imagine trying to explain how it works. The inventors of many of these implements must have had incredible brains for the times they lived in. And there again, I suppose that's why Great Britain was once the workshop to the world. 